So uh, good afternoon, good afternoon, Mr. Lee Kong Kong, and yes. thank you so much for granting us uh, the opportunity to interview Sir here in Siem Reap Province. And uh, Sir, you are the, uh, let's say, operation manager yes. of a Morikot Onko restaurant, yes. which you know handle a lot of uh, customers, mm -hmm. domestic and international, you know, throughout the season, especially yeah. the high season, Sir. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, as an expert in food. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, uh, catering different nationality. Okay. Uh, it is often, you know, agreed that food is uh, a very important element for the culture, sir. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, they say, they simply say that food brings people together. Yes. So, you know, just like music brings people together, just mm -hmm. like art brings people together. Mm -hmm. For you, sir, uh, as a food expert, how do you think about food when it, you know, brings people together, sir? Yes, uh, as you mentioned, food, it's a huge potential to bring people together, right? Yes, sir. There are certain elements which is important to bring people together. One of which is um, being very artistic. Food is also a form of art, mm -hmm. which you have to have creativity in order to express your feeling, express the flavor. So people want to feel good when they are together especially uh, in our culture we often become very from family orientated in, in asia in so asia yes. Say, yes so when we have lunch breakfast or dinner um, we often gather around and have a big bowl of one of our main dishes like and soup. we sh and we share yeah. together like yes, soup sir or even Stew. some roasted chicken, yes, uh, roasted fish, something like that, in order to share for everyone. At that meantime, it's a very pleasant feeling mm. for everyone around. It's an expression of enjoyment. Yes, That's sir. why food is one of the elements of arts that brings people together. So, so for example, when you look at you know, people going to your restaurant, you know, they enjoy the food and they enjoy the, the, the display of uh, uh, the dances, the mm -hmm. traditional uh, performance. When you see their face, uh, you know, they, they feel connected to each other mm -hmm. and also the food. Is that what you mean, sir? Um, in our restaurants, we have uh, a wide range of shows every yes. day. And uh, at the time they're enjoying dinner, the show is performing. Mm. And actually, their expression during dinner time with the dance shows yes, sir. Uh, expresses their emotions of enjoyment, especially when something that they haven't seen before. Mm. It's very new. It's one of a unique experience, especially if you are a foreigner who come to Cambodia for the first time, for the first say. time, yeah, that, yeah. let's say, and you see something very, I can say it, it's majestic because mm. our dancers are, are very decorative and one of our arts that is quite rare. Yes, sir. You can rarely find it in public events. So you have mm. to go to a special place and you have your meals, your Cambodian authentic dishes, the emotions of people in the setting is very unique. Yes. Mm. So, in simple terms, you know, in order to bring tourists to Cambodia, we need mm -hmm. to have a lot of, uh, you know, food, a lot of style, a lot of mm -hmm. taste, mm -hmm. because it is the, the chemistry that bond yes. uh, people together. Yes, sir. exactly. And at the same time, so because, um, you know, different continent mm -hmm. can have very different or uh, even drastic, you know, differences in, 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 in taste. Yes. So, because again, uh, globalization have uh, created a lot of the same thing across mm -hmm. the world, you know, mm -hmm. supermarket or maybe transportation, everything is very standardized. Mm -hmm. So, when people want to come and visit a country, they want something authentic, mm -hmm. you know, something that is uh, bespoke to that, yes. uh, that region. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to food, Sometimes it can be a bit hard for other country to, to fully immerse mm -hmm. because you know the taste can be a bit strong, the taste can be a bit weak, for example. Mm -hmm. So when you try to say, okay, so we have authentic Cambodian food mm -hmm. and we try to serve that to the foreigner. So how do you um, make it, you know, 
easy for them to taste for the first time, not to hurt their stomach, let's say. And at the same time, you know, re, re, uh, you know retain the Cambodian vibe. Okay. Yes, sir. That's a very interesting question. Yes, sir. Um, so there's a lot of nuances in what authenticity means. In a sense of globalizations, when we say everything is standard, in my perspective, it's a little bit pessimistic. It's, mm. it's making something that is used to be the original one and we change the perspective of something new to be the original one, let's say. Do you understand what I mean? It's a bit difficult to understand. Can, can you elaborate, sir? Yes. Um, let's say if we used to use um, brahok yes, as our dish, but the sense is very strong and then globalization comes, we use something substitute brahok. Oh. And then mm -hmm. in a long run, the use of the substitute becomes the authentic one. The, the nuance. That, yes, yeah, the, the nuance. Yeah, yes, yes, sir. yes, that's why um, if we want to preserve our authenticity, we need to use authentic ingredients. Mm -hmm. And we have some adjustments in order for people to enjoy. Let's say some food, it's very spicy, let's say people get hurt by eating spicy food. Yes, so yes. the ingredients can be decreased mm. in order for the uh, customers to enjoy. That's what I mean. But instead of using the substitute, we can uh, decrease or increase something else instead of the substitute. Yes, sir. And at the same time, you know, like the way we, because, you know, the presentation, you know, the way we eat the food can also mm changes the taste yeah so do you also think that okay so you for example the noodle should be eaten with chopstick or you know some food should be eaten by hand mm -hmm. do you think all of those also play an important role in the authenticity of the food sir exactly it's it's crucial it's mm. essential for the preservative of authenticity um yes, let's say something very widely known if you go to italy you eat pizza you eat with your hands while the pizza is hot not using fork and knife like some other foreigners the same way it ex the use of hands to feed pizza into your mouth can has, feel a bit different <laughs> has different uh, emotions towards your palate mm. that's why you have to preserve the also the, with the ingredient as well as the method of eating for our uh, dishes, let's say we have roasted chickens or mm. grilled chickens, uh, very specially known in Cambodia for Mon Ang, it's grilled chicken, uh, grilled chicken. You bring the whole chicken to the table and you uh, tear it off with your hands and you use your fingers, clean fingers, to, to peel to it, peel you know, it peel and then uh, yes. use it with some sauces and then you eat it with your hands in order to experience that mm. whole essence of uh, nuance, yeah. And at the same time, sir, uh, you know, you, you run a very big, let's say, buffet restaurant, yes. and, you know, many, let's say, sometimes buses mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, tourists come and, and enjoy. So, uh, how do you cater to different, um, let's say, tourists, sir, because, for example, Chinese, Mm -hmm. They may feel very familiar with our food. Mm -hmm. European, maybe not, or mm -hmm. maybe the Middle East yes. can be a bit very different. Yes. So how do you cater them? I mean, how do you make it generalized? And at the same time, sir, do you, you know, let's say, bring different food or fruit mm -hmm. based on the time of the year? Mm -hmm. or seasonal? Made seasonal, yes. yes. Um, in order to make everyone be happy with everything we offer. It's the best option to preserve your authenticity. Let's say you have an audience who like mm. sweet food. Or maybe spicy or food. Me, like or maybe yamash. spicy food. Yeah, yes. Yamash. yes. You have to preserve your authenticity so one can experience what they like. And if not, they can choose some other things. That mm. is one one way in order to make everyone happy. The second thing is that we have a wide range of dishes. 
ranging from our very traditional foods such as nung uh, prichok, some lo praha, and we have some uh, soup like influenced by Chinese ingredients soup, and we also have uh, some dishes uh, influenced from area around Indonesia and Malaysia for our guests to experience as well. But that is just one part. Maybe some other restaurants, they might adjust the flavor. Yeah. It's their way of organizing for to be uh, so that everyone is happy. Mm. But our way is that we include a wide variety of um, dishes. Yes, sir. So in summary and mm -hmm. also in general, Authenticity can mean to offer them, you know, what is uh, the real, you know, mm -hmm. food of the country. But at the same time, there have to be some, you know, inevitable compromises mm -hmm. that we have yeah. to make exactly. in order to. Yes. It's inevitable yeah. because, yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, if we travel abroad, we, we have to compromise ourselves, mm -hmm. our palates, what our preference is in order to experience something new. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, Mr. Komkom. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, again, you know, the region is the region. Yeah. Foods are similar and mm -hmm. food, you know, food crosses the border very quickly. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, some food are very, you know, they look similar, they taste similar, they are created from similar ingredients. So, is there anything, let's say, specific or maybe not directly, but, you know, you know, have a, a very, you know, popular image for Cambodia? For Cambodia? Yes, sir. There are a few that comes up to my mind when it comes to very authentic Cambodian dish. Yes, sir. Um, we have Nom Pichok Sam Lo Khmer, which is called uh, Cambodian noodles with um, fish, uh, like soup. Yes, sir. Yes. So we have krung, a blend of different spices, and coconut milk, and fish fillets, mashed up together, and then we have brahok in, in it as well. In certain cultures, they use the Cambodian noodles, or mm. the, they, some, some culture call it Chinese noodles. They have in their own way, but for us, we use it with that soup, and we mm. serve it with a wide variety of vegetables and even flowers. So it creates our Cambodian-ness of so it. So yes. it's like a, our variety. Yes, so. our variety, our twist mm. of the noodles. So another kind is, um, it comes up to my mind, it's some log or gold or fish at mock. Uh, they, they say some local co is yes. what we call like the hundred ingredient yeah. soup, something like that. Can, yes. can you elaborate more on that, sir? <laughs> oh, that soup is very interesting. It's mm. even different from provinces to provinces in Cambodia. They also call it the royal soup, uh, uh, if, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes. So, oh. um, what's special about um, coco soup is that we can put so many kinds of vegetables or root mm. vegetables, even flowers. Anything you can think of, you and, can. And still taste good. And, uh, and still taste good. And the special thing about that in Siem Reap is that we put even coconut milk mm. in it. So the variety includes, um, some people use pork, pork belly or fish. Some people even use snails mm. yes, uh, for the meat. Yeah. And for vegetables, you can use a wide variety of leafy greens, even papaya, green papaya even pumpkins, and some people even use um, certain roots that are very rare. Some people even put mushrooms in it. Mm. Yes, some people put eggplants. Uh, there are a billion variety well, of eggplants. Yeah. yeah, you know that. So it's very special. You can create your own style of coco, but in the end, uh, coco is still a very uh, a unique soup to Cambodia. Yes. Yes, sir. And how about homok, sir? Is it yes. truly, uh, you know, for Cambodia or is it like still regional food, let's say? I see certain cultures, they have a variety of twist mm. towards homok. Um, for us, we use krung. Our krung is a very unique blend of lemongrass, 
kichi, uh, ginger, oh no, I mean garlic. Yes, sir. yes. And other stuff that they put in it, even kaffir lime leaf yeah, mm. and turmeric. Yeah, that blend of spices creates a unique taste for our mok. And so we have our own spice. We mix with uh, fish fillets and coconut cream and some fish sauce in order to make mok itself. But for other cultures, they have their own unique blend of spice, and but they also use uh, coconut cream and fish and some other sauces, and they steam it as well. That's why they call it hamok, or we call it amok, whatever you like to call it. Mm -hmm. It is still a very beautiful blend of spices and protein in order to make a dish. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, back to uh, question number two a little bit, yeah. because um, when we say authenticity, we normally think of uh, you know the thing that is ready on the plate. Mm -hmm. But f for some people, they might go further. You know, they want to know oh, if that ingredient really come from a specific region. You know, mm. popular for mm. that for that fruit. For example, of course, yes. a kapot pepper. Yes. In kapot, or maybe you know the palm sugar from kapung spu, or mm -hmm. maybe. Uh, fish directly mm -hmm. caught from the Tule Sap Lake. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about authenticity, do you also try to preserve, you know, the originality from the source itself, sir? Is there yeah. that that you know urgency to to do that? That is a very very interesting concept to call authenticity. Certain areas with their soil, weather the way of growing the plants from the traditional way creates a unique flavor. Mm. Let's, let's say uh, palm sugar. It is made from palm juice. And palm grows in certain areas with certain seasons influence those uh, complex flavors. And when you turn it into you know, the real final product, you also changes you also change the flavor mm. what i mean is that the real region of the that unique ingredient let's say kampung spu and palm sugar creates a next level of authenticity mm. but that doesn't mean uh, the palm sugar in siem reap or in kampung cham is any less Less uh, qualified, less quali quality well, than the yeah. original one. If you have the uh, yeah. time and budget and even your commitment, commitment, <laughs> yeah, to go yeah. to that specific area in order mm. to exp experience the real authenticity, it would be very fantastic. So, so from what you say, the word authenticity is a broad term, sir. Yes, it's a broad term, yes. So there, there's no one standard definition, you know, for food, no. It, it, can, be, it can be changed uh, based it's, on yes. circumstances. Yes, it, it is a little bit mm. dynamic. You, ch you can change, but mm. to a certain extent, you cannot extend it too much. It's, it's a spectrum of... Uh, the attribute is in, in the spectrum, yeah. Yes, sir. And uh, again, my following question, uh, it's something that, you know, somehow, not, not truly, but mm -hmm. somehow counter authenticity. Mm -hmm. uh, let's say art or the way, you know, the food is uh, presented. Mm -hmm. So normally in the past, uh, food are served normally on mm -hmm. the plate. There is mm -hmm. no presentation. Uh, for example, the grilled beef, mm -hmm. they just put it on the stove. Yep. It's cooked and mm -hmm. then it's put on the plate. Mm -hmm. In some countries, let's say China, mm -hmm. they, you know, the, the grill itself, they, they can move, you know, they, they, you know, there's a mechanism that moves the, the beef mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. Does it make any difference? I don't think so, but it's more like a presentation, sir. Mm -hmm. yeah. So in this case, they somehow bring the, you know, the modern technique to, to gr uh, grilling beef. Yes. So again, just now you mentioned that, okay, people want authenticity especially yeah. the region that they have never visited before. Mm -hmm. But in some other time, people also want to see something new. Yeah. So do you, do you feel there's a conflict between that? And do we need to pursue okay, uh, art, modern, modernity and authenticity at the same time? You know, it's a the contradicting idea here, sir. So you are talking about creating something a little bit 
uh, of modern, a twist yeah. of a modern vibe into yeah. it. I think it's a good way to explore. Maybe it's going to be good. Maybe it's going to be bad. Mm. It is not a right and wrong. When you talk about arts, it's not a right and wrong thing. But if you want to talk about the arts of preserving culture, you have to have a documentary, a place where you need to see the real originality and a place mm. to express that, oh, this is a twist from the original version. Mm. Yeah, a balance. Yes, so. there is a balance. And after the twist, you should not call it an original one because obviously it is not. Yes, but with a twist, it creates another emotion for mm -hmm. the guest or our people to experience it. Let's say before we used to make grilled fish wrapped in whole, the guts inside and everything, and mm -hmm. we put on a table, we share with people. Yes, very typical. Very typical. Yes. Very normal amongst our people. But if you want to create a modern twist, we have mm. um, fish fillet. So you, you fillet the fish and then you uh, grill it and you put some uh, sauces such as tamarind sauce on it and serve with some vegetables on the plate. So you call mm. it grilled fish as well. It, it's a twist from the original one. But in a sense, it cannot be replaced. It cannot be interchangeable. Both are good on its own, good with its own uh, settings of uh, having dinner or lunch or breakfast, but it is still different. <laughs> yeah. mm. Yes, sir. And uh, you serve a lot of uh, customers from outside the country, sir. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, despite of a different, different nationality, what is the dishes that they like the most about Cambodia, sir? For so Cam far. So yeah. far, for Cambodians, Mm, it's a hard question, actually. <laughs> for desserts, we haven't talked about desserts yet, right? Mm. For desserts, most of our desserts are made using rice flour. A lot of it use rice flour. And they have their unique experience putting rice flour in desserts, such mm. as uh, pumpkin pudding, uh, num cha, layered cakes. Yeah, and even some other desserts that use rice flowers and foreigners like it very very much mm. from my experience yes sir and some desserts which are not really uh, a dessert but fruit that grows in our region only such as dragon fruit something like that is very they hate. also like that sir. yeah they yeah. they they like it very much but talking about uh, the savory dish they like a mock, mm. even cocoa. It's, it's yes, not sir. that they like it very much as much as a mock, but uh, they want to experience it. I mm. often call it a culinary adventure. They like want to try the, something the, new. Like the go-to dish yes. when you come to Cambodia. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. And num uh, uh Khmer noodles with our soup. And even some certain uh, regional dishes like grilled chicken, they call it Siem grilled chicken. Yes, sir. Mon dot Siem mm. That is a very unique experience when they try to pull the meat from a whole chicken yes, sir. <laughs> in order to experience everything. Yeah. Yes, that sir. is also one of the very famous dishes. Yeah. And, uh, sir, I mean, it could be the last question, but um, normally, some regional countries in Cambodia, they are they can be good at marketing, you know, at at, at marketing their their food uh, outside. So, is there anything that Cambodia still need to learn? The thing that we still lack like, that we need to learn from them. Not not only the regional, but also you know other outside country that we think that okay, their marketing scheme, uh, you know, theme is very uh, attractive. Yeah, yeah, we we still have a lot to learn from it. Yes, sir. Something that is original and authentic doesn't mean it's attractive. Mm, you okay. get what I mean? It doesn't mean it's attractive. Let's say it's yeah. our certain dish, like cocoa, some local cocoa, cocoa soup. The color of it is not very vibrant. Okay, yeah, the I color see. of yeah. it is not very vibrant. Mm. But in order to make something more attractive, it needs to be vibrant on itself. 
that's why we need to know the twist of making uh, cocoa in order to present in a visually attractive way mm. so that people that uh, they don't have time or very far away from Cambodia can experience it through the mm. internet. So before yeah. they taste, they need to see first. Yes, before they taste, mm. they need to see first. But when we change the color, it's not authentic anymore. You see that there's a catch over there. Uh, that's why mm. I, I always yeah. emphasize uh, make a twist or mm. something that is uh, not truly authentic, but name it the other way around. Mm. You you get what I mean? Yes, I'm not, it's, it's something that mm, Cambodian people see it and we think it's very normal. We use in banana leaves uh, bowl and we put and steam it, right? But if we present it in a very decorative way, we show the way how the banana leaves are cut how they are washed, how they need to be sun-dried, and the time it takes, the labor it takes, in order to have that one bowl of fish amok and present it in a very, how do you call it, creative marketing. We have something that can attract people from other countries or far away to come and experience something very authentic. I can give you another example of ways other people create let's uh, you go to see chocolate yes sir yes no. chocolate not many people know that chocolate comes from cacao pot and the fruit is white inside mm. yeah okay so the fruit is white inside it's not brown it's no. not even brown oh, until you okay. until you process it and then you roast it and then it comes brown mm. That is a very interesting way to make something visually um, attractive and turn it into a video and show it to the world that our region is not famous for chocolate, of course, but mm. this is just an example of how the original uh, country, the origin of cacao, they make the video and attract people in order for us, let's say, us go and visit their place. and they. Promoted, let's say, cacao has a lot of benefits for the health, as mm. well as uh, something very unique. Not many people know. Yeah, no one even imagined chocolate comes from a fruit. Yeah, yes, sir. So promoting uh, a food, especially outside the country, is a multi-pronged approach. Yes, yes. You you cannot just only cook and then okay, you present it, people mm. will come. Yeah, exactly. Not not exactly not, like not that. exactly that. Yeah. Okay. You have a multifaceted way to present it to people. Yes. So thank you so much, Mr. Kom Kom, for the much. interview. And yes. uh, I hope there will be more customers who will come to visit Cambodia and they will taste our local food. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes thank sir. you very much. Thank and you. I hope that everyone in Cambodia can make more content for people, especially in our modern traditional, uh, modern age of the internet. Make more content, spread it to the world, make something interesting so people can come and see. Because we have a tons and tons of things to show to the world that we are a unique culture. <laughs>